Welcome back to She Speaks Anyways. In this episode, we're going to explore something incredibly important and often misunderstood, the science behind the subconscious mind. Now, you've heard me say this before, the subconscious mind controls up to 95% of your daily behavior. But what does that really mean? And how does it work scientifically? Let's break it down. First, we need to understand the basic difference between the conscious and the subconscious mind. Your conscious mind is the thinking part of your brain. It's the part you're using right now to listen to this episode. It helps you analyze, make decisions, plan, and set goals. But your subconscious mind? That's the part working quietly in the background. It stores your memories, your beliefs, your emotions, your habits, everything you've ever experienced. It never sleeps. It's always listening, always learning, always influencing your life. Here's the kicker. Even when you consciously want something like more confidence, financial success, or better health, if your subconscious mind holds a conflicting belief, it will silently sabotage your efforts. That's why change often feels so hard. It's not because you lack discipline, it's because your programming is outdated. Now let's talk brainwaves, because this is where the science gets fascinating. Your brain functions using electrical activity, and this activity occurs in different frequencies called brain waves. Each frequency corresponds to a different mental state. When you're fully awake, alert, and focused, like during work or intense conversations, you're in the beta state. When you start to relax, like when you're daydreaming or winding down before sleep, you enter the alpha state. This is the bridge between conscious thinking and subconscious awareness. Go deeper, and you reach theta, a meditative, dreamlike state. This is where the magic happens. Theta is the ideal state for subconscious programming. It's the state children live in most of the time, which is why they absorb language, beliefs, and behaviors so effortlessly. Finally, there's delta, which is deep, restorative sleep, important for healing, but not ideal for learning or conscious transformation. So why does this matter? Because if you want to reprogram your subconscious, you need to tap into alpha and theta brainwaves. That's why techniques like meditation, hypnosis, and visualization are so effective, they slow your brain down and open the gateway to your subconscious. Now let's get into neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is your brain's ability to change. It's the reason why people can learn new skills in their 40s, recover from trauma, or overcome lifelong fears. It means that your brain is constantly creating and reinforcing neural pathways connections between thoughts, emotions, and actions. Every time you think a thought, you strengthen the pathway for it. Repeated thoughts become beliefs, beliefs become behaviors, behaviors become your reality. Think about it like this. If you've always believed you're not good enough, your brain has literally built a neural superhighway for that belief. Every experience that supports it gets stored as proof. Every time someone doubts you or you make a mistake, it's like adding another lane to that highway. But the great news is you can build new highways. You can change the belief. You can form new thoughts, new feelings, and new habits that align with your goals. But you need repetition. You need intention. And you need to access those alpha and theta states where the subconscious mind is most receptive. Another powerful key is emotion. Your subconscious mind responds more to emotion than logic. It doesn't care if something is true, it cares if you feel it's true. This is why traumatic events from childhood stay with us. The emotional impact imprints the experience directly into our subconscious. But this also means we can use positive emotions to our advantage. When you visualize a goal, don't just see it, feel it. Imagine the excitement, the pride, the joy of living that reality. The more emotion you bring in, the deeper the imprint on your subconscious. So when you say your affirmations, when you meditate on your vision, connect it to an emotional state. This combination of repetition and emotion is what rewires the mind. Let's talk about science-backed examples. One of the most famous studies on the mind-body connection involved placebos. Patients were given sugar pills but told they were receiving powerful medication and many of them got better. Not because of the pill, but because of the belief. Athletes, too, use visualization not as wishful thinking, but as mental training. Olympians mentally rehearse their performance in detail, feeling every muscle movement, every heartbeat. Their brains respond as if the event is actually happening. That's the power of the subconscious. 
In therapy, techniques like cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT and EMDR, are based on helping people access and shift subconscious patterns that were formed through emotion and repetition. So here's what we've learned today. Your subconscious is not mystical, it's measurable. It responds to brainwaves, emotions, and repetition. And it can be trained. You are not stuck with the beliefs you were raised with. You are not limited by your old habits. You are not defined by your past programming. You are reprogrammable. You are changeable. You are powerful. As we move into episode five, we'll talk about one of the biggest subconscious blocks, fear and negative thinking. You'll learn where fear lives in the brain, how to override it, and how to turn doubt into belief. But for now, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. What's one subconscious belief you've identified in yourself, and how are you planning to rewire it? Thank you for being here. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss what's coming next. Until next time, she speaks anyways.